Thank you for listening to Scandinavian Crimes Podcast. Be sure to check out the episode links and be part of our other social media platforms where you can leave a topic suggestion or even share some of your insights regarding the subject matter of the episode. We will always do our best to provide a well-researched episode, but sometimes due to limited access to information and translation issues, some information can be lost. It is therefore good to do your own research and get a deeper understanding of a case of your own interest. So with that all said, let us start today's episode. Welcome to Scandinavian Crimes. My name is Devante, and say hello to my co-host, Delilah. Hi. And on this podcast, on the first episode, um, we are going to cover famous Scandinavian criminals who made their mark throughout Scandinavian history. While I'm pretty sure a lot of you in the audience who listen know that the United States is considered the serial killer slash crime capital of the world, there are plenty of known and unknown serial killers and criminals all across the globe as well while some of them and their names may be unfamiliar to you these killers and the things that they've done can be very terrifying especially when they've been done in their home countries with various reigns and terror and some more terrifying than others and today we are covering the notorious dagmar overby Dagmar Overby is one of the most notorious serial killers in Denmark's history. One of the reasons she was deemed one of Denmark's most notorious killers was not simply because she killed people, but she targeted babies and children. In 1915, she opened an adoption agency that supposedly acted as a go-between for mothers and adoptive families. Now, back in the early 1900s, it's always encouraged, you know, for people to have families, get married, and do it the right way. And I say that in quotes. So seemingly, she targeted an adoption agency as a way to be her perfect hunting ground for her killings. However, Overby never actually assisted with any adoptions. Instead, Overby was working as a professional child caretaker, caring for babies born outside of marriage. Now, like I mentioned a second ago, marriage was such a big thing, especially in the early 1900s. So this is taking place between, you know, 1916 to 1920. So having a child out of wedlock is basically cardinal sin back in the day. I know 2022, it doesn't matter, but this was a big deal back then. From the little information we can find about Dagmar Overby, she seemed like a normal woman, but there were a few people who thought she was a little off, but nothing to be concerned about. So for about three to four years, people didn't really notice any constant changes of the children that were disappearing, coming and going. And for the most part, she floated undetected. Around year five, many people would notice how often the children would disappear and they wouldn't even know the families that they went to. And eventually those rumors would evolve and spread. And many people thought she was indeed killing the children or at the very least something was going on with them. But even though these were rumors and even though people did believe it to some level, there was never really any proof, never really any evidence. So it basically stayed what it was, which was a rumor. Her killing behind the scene would continue until the police arrested Overby in 1920. Despite the lack of evidence, the only reason the police was able to arrest her in the first place was after a mother regretted her decision to give her baby up for adoption. When she returned to Overby to ask for her child back, Overby said she didn't remember the name or the address of the family that adopted her. Now, if anybody knows an adoption agency, there's records for all this stuff. Even old adoption agencies have records of children and where they're going and who they're with for very obvious reasons. So the mother knew something was very much wrong and was kind of getting this weird feeling and she was very much aware of the rumors regarding basically what she was doing with the kids. So she did what any rational person would do and contacted the police. After the police were contacted, they discovered the charred remains of the baby in Overbuyer's home. Upon her arrest, Overbuyer claimed to have killed 16 babies, possibly starting with her own children. But Overby was only charged and convicted for killing nine due to the lack of evidence. Some of the people suspected that she could have killed 25 babies over the years, and some think 
way more. While initially sentenced to death for her crimes, the king at the time commuted her sentence to life in prison, where Overby would die in 1929. After reviewing the bodies of the children, it was discovered one of the ways that she actually enjoyed killing the kids was via strangulation. And in some cases as well, she even drowned them. They figured all this out from the charred bodies that they would later find in her masonry heater that was down in her home. So this is the story of Dagmar Overby. So isn't this kind of crazy? Like at the end of the day, like she ran an adoption agency where kids who technically weren't wanted were supposed to like just go be able to find a family. And then all of a sudden it's just like, she was killing them in her own home, charring their bodies, strangling them, and basically just drowning them instead of doing what her job was meant to be done. And then she still kind of got off in a way, even though she died not too soon after that, where she didn't even get the life. Well, she got life in prison, but she didn't get the death penalty at the time. So it's kind of crazy you see stuff like this, but I don't know. What do you think? I think that it's usually kids who often fall victim of these things or could have fallen victim to these things because they never get noticed. And uh, in this case, it took people to realize uh, like five years they did see that something was off, but they didn't really suspect anything until like five years later where probably a lot of children got killed and murdered during that period of time. And uh, I don't know, I just think it's, she was smart in like opening this kind of thing to and also like kill without people noticing. But like, I just think it's weird, like, because we can't really tell or know why she did this and started this whole thing. Uh, I mean, it's hard to say, honestly, to be honest with you, like people do things for various reasons. Especially this is during a time, I know we was talking about this like before we started even recording this, where like mental health was not taken nearly as seriously as it should have been. Uh, 1916, 1920 living conditions were in some ways far worse. There was like polio and stuff that was very much, mm -hmm. you know, prevalent. Yeah. There was a lot of like things that were that existed back then that we don't even really get to see anymore because of you know, innovation, modern medicine and all that stuff. So who knows? But it seemed the fact that she was killing children, you know, um, it could just simply be two reasons. One, she was just simply crazy. Mm -hmm. Or two, um, maybe in her own way, she felt like this is her saving the children. Like she did not have to, they didn't have to deal with the world of not being wanted. So she kind of took them out their misery because there are some criminals who have like this hero complex where they feel like they're doing something wrong for a greater good. Mm -hmm. And I think it's possible that this can be one of the cases, but also from reading the list of other people that we have coming up on the podcast, it's actually, this is not the first time, nor is this the first woman, nor would this be the last <laughs> to really do this. So uh, it's, it's hard to say, honestly. And sometimes, you know, children can cause people to snap you know whatever the reasoning yeah, is. yeah i was and... thinking about the same thing that maybe some of the kids was very a lot of work some in some way and her way to just easily get rid of them was killing them or because kids are like it's hard work and some some kids might have been put there on the adoption uh, because like when, when they are older or if they were homeless because of war times so like anything of that sort um they could have their own traumas and if they weren't like babies but in this case it was babies right or was it kids yeah or... it was mostly it was from at least they never gave a specific age and some of the and like i said her information actually is not as common and there's a couple uh, people on the list that their information is not super uh, because like it's information old. is not as out there. Yeah. yeah, it's really old. So but from my understanding, a lot of them were below the age of like six. So I would yeah, say okay. maybe from like one to five. So she was killing like mostly babies, but also 
sometimes it could be someone who was like four, for yeah. example. But I'm assuming mostly babies because, you it's know, like easier, I said, the whole born maybe. out of wedlock and it's easier and, you know, it's just, it's pretty quick and simple and easy. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it like I have experience. But, no, I'm just, know, we assume things here. <laughs> they're babies. Yeah. Yeah, they're babies. So they can't really fight back nearly as much as someone who's even four or five. So I would assume at least 85% of them were children little babies but i did read um now i don't know how true this is but there was some information i found that she was abused as a child Mm. um that she herself was abused as a baby and uh at least that's the argument that her lawyer made in the courthouse it just circulates when they were defending her trauma Yeah. yeah so basically even if she got abused herself as a baby you know it's like Even if, like, they say you don't remember certain things as a baby, sometimes that stuff actually can linger. The trauma Mm -hmm. can cause your brain to alter as you develop, and then, you know, the cycle continues. For sure, yeah. So it's it's interesting for sure because then it just makes you think, like, is she really this monster or is she just simply a victim? Well, you can be both, honestly, because usually I... I, me personally, I don't think that um, just because you're a victim doesn't justify the crime you have done. Um, so I think that's true. I think that, and also it's very sad because probably she couldn't get the help that she needed, um, and it just the cycle was just continuing with the trauma, and she put that on the kids, and even like killed some of the kids as well so i think to me you can still be both so i think that based on her circumstances i you can understand her but i don't i think it's dangerous to just say that it's um to somehow belittle the things that she have done which is actually killing babies um so yeah this is true i i agree with you wholeheartedly but i don't know it's hard to say like i said different times Mm -hmm. different rules and obviously as episodes go along i think things will become more transparent because we have a better understanding of human nature of the human mind circumstances and just we know that there's so many variables that can take place especially for people like this who are killers they kill babies and I have no idea what she would be thinking to kill children for basically a like a living almost. She was getting paid as like someone working at an adoption agency to find homes for these children. And she was like, well, your home is going to be a grave. So, you know, it's just uh, it's really hard to tell what the train of thought is for people like this. Yeah. But I thought this would just be a nice, you know, episode or person to start off with, mm-hmm. because, like I said, this is pretty old. And there's not, like, a ton of information online about it. But as we, you know, kind of keep going and going through modern times and as we reach, you know, more recent history, you know, I think that it will we'll get more definitive answers. We'll get more definitive questions as well. Mm-hmm. And also we will kind of understand these criminals more and what made them criminals. Because sometimes people can be criminals just by circumstance yeah. you know that wasn't their intention to be monsters in history sometimes it can be someone's fault sometimes it can be the parents fault it can be the government's fault it can be anyone's fault mm-hmm. but i guess that's what makes things like this interesting just being able to open the discussion floor see what people think how they feel about it and all that jazz so we'll see coming up you know in the future I think that this case, like, when I heard about this, I thought that actually she was paid to kill them because back in the days, uh, there were a lot of preference to have boys than women or uh, kid uh, girls. <laughs> it was more preferred to have boys than girls because it was just the way it was back then, basically. And I thought that she killed the kids who were somehow disabled or not healthy or uh, were girls um, and got money from it basically but now that I have heard of what you have said and the stories and everything it um, 
it just is completely different than I thought. She just basically killed, and we assume that it's based on her tra past trauma that she uh, then later on decided to put on the kids, which is sad. It's truly sad. The kids were innocent and people didn't notice because they didn't have any parents or anyone to supervise them except for her, the murderer. And it's just very, it's sad. Even though it was years ago, it's still kids who were killed or murdered. Yeah, well, and thankfully, even though we're still dealing with, you know, a lot of different crimes, in some way, shape or form, at least, I feel like we're a little bit more evolved, even though sometimes I think we're a little bit like Neanderthal sometimes. But, you know, we'll get to know these killers as the episodes go along. But for all of you listeners out there, we're not going to drag this on too much longer. You know, a nice little first episode, something short, sweet you can listen to on your way to work or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I'm not going to drag this out any longer. You can expect episodes every week. Um, we'll figure out a date and all that stuff, like in terms of what's best for, uh, you know, the day of the week um, in terms of, you know, maybe Scandinavian, Nordic and all that timing and all that jazz. We'll try and figure out a good timing for it. And maybe we'll do it like, I don't know, maybe every Tuesday or every Wednesday. But essentially, we'll figure it out. And once we figure it out, the episodes will be released according to that schedule, probably on a weekly basis. Because, you know, we, we're going to back record all this stuff. So you won't notice, but I'm still, for the sake of transparency, going to tell you guys, you know, we're figuring it out as we go along. So I hope you enjoyed the first episode. And if you have any suggestion for killers or criminals or anything like that, Feel free to, you know, uh, reach out. We'll leave some way to communicate in the description or notes on whatever platform you may be listening to, where, whether it be uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, wherever it is, there will be uh, some way to contact and kind of leave notes and or things that you may want to listen to. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And uh, I guess we bid you a farewell, I guess. Yes. Farewell, my listeners. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.